All right. Well, thanks for joining us. Uh, I'm joined by Dave uh, Urquhart, uh, recently just completed his second season um, as the assistant coach with the San Diego Gulls of the AHL. Uh, prior to this, Dave coached at McGill University in Montreal and also served as the head coach of Team Serbia at the 2018, uh, 2018 uh, World Hockey Championships. As a player, Dave played 130 career games in the AHL and four collegiate U sports seasons with the McGill Redmen. Now the, uh, what's their name, Dave? They changed their uh, nickname. No name yet. No name, no name. So finished a career with McGill No Names, uh, earning a commerce degree in 2008. He joins us today as we talk about his graduate work in team culture and culture building, and specifically his recently published paper entitled The Development, Articulation, and Implementation of a Coaching Vision of Multiple Championships, Winning University Hockey Coaches. Thanks for joining us today, Dave. Uh, thank you, Dave, for having me on. Um, so, you know, we're going to kind of frame the whole conversation around your paper and 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 I'll be honest with you, this, you know, took me back to my university days and, and to uh, my own master's work of uh, kind of digging through, uh, you know, academic papers and trying to take nuggets out of it. And I can, you know, tell you that, uh, you know, reading this was for me as a coach was, was you know, massively uh, um, kind of inspiring. And, and it's nice to see that, you know, these successful coaches go through the same kind of thought process that, you know, uh, that we do as well. So what was, what was the, what was the start of this? Like what, what uh, inspired this topic for you? So uh, it, it goes back to uh, my second year coaching at McGill as assistant coach. And I was, I was coaching there, um, mentoring under Kelly Nobes, our head coach there. And he was outstanding. I was continuing to learn. And I thought, how can I continue to become a better coach while, while staying in this position as an assistant coach? And uh, that's when the idea of pursuing a, a master's degree in sports psychology came along. And uh, had a great supervisor there, Dr. Gordon Bloom, and he basically let let a lot of the students guide their studies self-directed in terms of follow something that you're interested in, what you have passion about. And for me, it was, I wanted to be a better coach. And I asked myself, what's the best way to become a better coach is study the best coaches in the world. Uh, and so that took me down this, this research path of studying culture and coaching vision and specifically college hockey coaches who had won multiple championships. I know we all have different definitions for success and not success doesn't always come with winning. It, you, can, you can judge success and a lot of other factors, but specifically for this study, I wanted to look at, at coaches that did win national championships and look at their process and, and what they did. And uh, in, that, in that search, and in that, in that process, uh, I did a lot of reading, uh, a lot of research articles, a lot of books on coaches from different sports, different levels who had won multiple championships. And uh, it, it steered me in that direction. And, and I became really passionate about learning about these types of coaches. And it was interesting to see there's a lot of commonalities uh, amongst these coaches, uh, things like uh, exceptional work ethic, they're lifelong learners, they're adaptable, they had clear understandings of standards required for success, high self-awareness. They, they, they could really do a good job of self-reflection, uh, you know, after games, especially as part of their learning process. Uh, they were effective communicators and they really could uh, create and sustain their cultures. And one of the, one of the elements in that that came up when I was looking at these, these coaches who had won was this, this concept of, of vision. And it, a lot of people talked about, uh, you know, we ha had a vision for the program. It's this. And uh, when I was when I was looking into it more, I said, okay, well, let let's look at this specific aspect a little bit more because um, not a lot of people went into detail about what this vision is, how it was developed, and and as a young coach, someone starting in in, in uh, on a pathway in this coaching career, you know, I said this could be a valuable thing for personally as learning and develop my own career, and then hopefully pass it on to coaches and, and the quick aside is what you're doing here today is, is creating a forum and platform for coaches to learn. And I think that's great because uh, the greatest coaches are, have that, have that tendency to continue learning through their career. And um, so, yeah, so I stuck on this topic of, of vision and, you know, you look at professional sports, these aren't the guys I, I got to interview, but there's a couple of great examples for coaches who want to, who want to learn from, from guys who are doing it the right way. And I think guys like Pete Carroll and for the Seattle Seahawks in the NFL do it well. Pep Guardiola in, uh, in European soccer does, does a great job of it. Steve Kerr in the NBA, 
uh, has very clearly defined standards and, and values. He's a great guy to look at. And, and Graham Henry, uh, who, who was the coach in New Zealand, All Blacks, those are, those are some organizations who, who do it right. And who, if you're looking, looking for people who are, who are inspiring and, and coaches to model yourselves after, those are some guys you can start with who do it in the professional domain. Um, so when I got into this, this concept of, of vision, uh, I thought about, okay, so what is it? And, uh, you know, you, you talk to different coaches uh, in different places. And, and one of the coaches I talked to was, was my, my former coach when I was a player at McGill, uh, Marty Raymond. And, and Marty's had a, had a great coaching career, coaching as, a, as an assistant in the NHL uh, and as head coach in the QMJHL. And he's, he's been an assistant with the Canada's national, national junior teams and, and won gold medals. And, He's a, he's a guy who has, has a great perspective on coaching. And he described it, I, I, said, I, I asked him, what do you think coaching vision is? And uh, he described it as, he said, the vision is, is your compass. And that guides, guides you on your path on the roadmap to success. So it's not always a clear pathway and the map, map's directions aren't always right, but that, that vision is your compass and it'll, it'll steer you towards where you wanna take your team. And I thought that was a great way of putting it um, because that vision, you know, when you look at the research, it has, has a bunch of different elements. Uh, you know, it, it includes the, the coach's philosophy, their values. It gets into goal setting as well. It can, can encompass things like that. And it, it overall plan for, for development of athletes, the, the holistic development of athletes. Um, and when you look at coaches who, who succeed their, their visions authentic to who they are, it, it's different, you know, so Steve Kerr's vision is different than Pete Carroll's, uh, but they have a, a vision and it's clearly set and it's with values uh, and, and gives some gives purpose and identity to the team and it helps define your standards of excellence. So, uh, I, you know, briefly, that's that's an overall landscape of, of what was out there. Uh, and that's kind of how I started that journey into this topic of, of coaching vision. And, 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 you know, it encompasses a lot of things standards and culture uh but i think it's a great topic for coaches to to look into so what was your method i mean you obviously you know take it taking a deep dive into this and and you just you know encompass you know uh, a lot of information from your own personal background your own experiences like take us through the process now of you know you want to put together this this report or this paper that you know that we're going to talk about like what was the method you know you know uh the coaches you were able to talk to kind of what what did you go through to kind of get their experience and kind of put that in in the form that you were able to kind of report it in yeah the, the whole process was was new to me this whole research process you know my background you know i was a, I was a professional hockey player coming into before coaching and so diving back into this whole process was was fun and it required a lot of help so you know i had a lot of support from from the graduate graduate group of students and, and supervisor as well yeah. uh, so they they knew this process so basically they laid it out for me the first step is you know getting to know the landscape and that's yeah. that that you know doing literature review understanding what's going on out there so that that's kind of getting that background on winning coaches looking at the other research and then and then the fun part starts so that's the first first part of it and then the fun part starts as you get to you have to go out and talk to coaches. So my method was, was interviews. So I got to sit down with six different coaches uh, from, from Canadian university and U S college division, division one, NCAA division one, yep. and coaches who had won at least two national championships. So we're talking about some of the best coaches uh, based if you base success on winning championships. Yep. So it was a really exciting experience. I got to, got to travel around and sit down with, with these guys, uh, and, and learn a lot from them. Uh, and part of the research process, uh, I, you can't, uh, as research ethics is you can't share the names of those coaches. Yeah. Uh, although I, I don't think they would mind, but so for the, for the purpose of the, of the podcast, I'm not going to share their names, but yeah. uh, you know, guys who had been coaching for a very long time uh, and who, who, who have clearly, uh, clearly defined standards of success. So that, that was, that was the next part of that process. And then you have to break down that, those interviews and, and, and break it into themes and, and come up with something that, you know, that's not in that something new, something, something new and interesting um, that hasn't necessarily been touched upon in the research before. 
No, I think, you know, one of the, um, you know, everyone loves pictures, but I mean, in the paper, you kind of encompass this whole process in, in a figure in, in the paper and, and that, that, you know, the continuum, so to speak, of where the coach kind of creates the vision uh, and moves through that process personally and then kind of instills that in the group and, and becomes a reflection of, you know, their personal beliefs and whatnot. So do you, can you can you kind of walk us through what, you know, through the, 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 the findings and going through that process of researching, you know, what was that phased, what's that phased approach look like in the grandest scheme of what kind of what you came came to conclude to? Yeah, if if you can sum it up simply, it's if you look at look at the vision in in three phases, and it's a development phase. It's a phase where it's articulated, and and then another phase where it's implemented. And you know, it's uh, I got I kind of was inspired from a leadership course I took when I was an undergrad student, uh, and I got to do a project on Dr. Martin Luther King. And they talked about his vision and it kind of stuck with me. It was the vision of a transformational leader, but the, the process was, you know, you, th these leaders go through an information gathering stage. So that's the start. So that's this, this developing the vision. It's, it's your life experiences leading up to a point where you get to actually articulate that vision and implement it. So that's an interesting phase. And for these coaches that, that I, that I got to interview, uh, some interesting things came up in, in their de their development, and it was a commonality amongst them was they they shared time as uh, they each spent time as an assistant coach with programs that had success, and as part of developing a vision for a successful coach and, and eventually implementing that down the road for successful teams, it's interesting to see that they had already been exposed to standards of success that it takes to win championships. And, you know, that's a really interesting point as a coach, because not necessarily every coach gets to experience that is working, working side by side and seeing the inner workings of a, a championship program. However, you can make up for that by learning from other coaches and specifically learning if that's your goal is to win, uh, then you can you can follow the habits and, and, and processes of coaches that win. And, and try to implement them in your own process. So I thought that was really interesting. Now, was there any examples of you say like learning how to win or be in success? Was there any in examples from your research of learning what not to do? Like, you know, it, that that role as assistant coach saying, okay, I'm going to, you know, do things differently when I become the, the, the person in charge. Yeah, definitely. Because, and that, that ties back into the authenticity of the, the message and the authenticity of the vision. Because, uh, you know, there was one coach that said, he, you know, he worked under a, a coach who was, who was really hard on the players and he did it a certain way and he, he won. And he said, but that's not, who he was individually as a coach. He said, that's, that's not who he was and he couldn't do it that way. Uh, so you, you take part of it, you mold it, uh, and, and then they make it, make it their own. Right. Um, so from that, you know, the phased approach, the, 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 you know, the create the personal foundation and you create your own vision based off of that. And then you kind of implement the, the task. Was there, was there a connecting theme like was there was there a, a, a between the six coaches was there was there something that connected you thought you thought all of them together in that process that was you know a commonality for all of them yeah i think i think they did all did a great job of of creating that environment and and doing that in different ways so um one one way that one co coach articulated is he said you know i want to have players leave here with a diploma in one hand and then a championship ring on the other. And to me, that encompasses two things that encompass personal development as, as an athlete, as a, as a uh, academically, and then also as an athlete professionally, you want to leave with a ring, but you also want to leave with the diploma. So, and, and that tells me coaches, and this isn't necessarily with all coaches who win, but, you know, this it may be one of the limitations of this this particular study is in, in the college college coaches that it is important to have the, that development of the athlete as well as uh, the personal development. So um, I thought that was an important part to say, you know, you know, what, we're not just here to, to win games. We're here to develop people. And and that's an important message for for coaches at all levels, because sometimes that gets lost in 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 the the whole the whole mix of the pressure of winning games but at the end of the day you want to be developing people good people and and part of that is is creating the environment for success 
And you used the term I thought was great, holistic athlete, athlete, athlete development, sorry. And, and why do you think did, did the coaches give any sense of why they thought that was important beyond like the obvious reasons? Like, was there, was there a, a shared experience? Like what, what created the feeling that this holistic, like the ring and the diploma part, why did they feel that that was so integral to, you know, you know, implementing and, and really seeing that vision out? Uh, it's, it's an interesting question because I'm not sure if that was that was picked up over time or if it was if it was uh, if it was just something that was innate in, in who they were, um, and that might be a question that's worth following up following up with them. But I I don't have a, have a great great example of, of that. Um, I just feel that the you know from the paper you know you use that term shared ownership, and I think like mm -hmm. that for me like it felt like you know reading it that the coaches got some sense that the, the players actually, it was more cooperative because he cared about them as beyond being an athlete. And I just wanted to, if they, I want to know if the coaches explicitly felt that way from their, from their experience. Yeah. I, I did get that impression from, from a lot of the coaches and um, you know, if an example of that is, you know, that shit, that, that shared ownership and that empowerment aspect that that's part of the, of implementing the vision. Um, a good example of that is, is one of the coaches talked about how he would bring his leaders in at the start of the year and say, okay, what are your goals for the year? And, you know, that was different every year. Uh, some years it would be, let's win a national championship. Some years it would be, let's, let's win, let's win the division. Let's, let's win this. Uh, but he, he put it on them. He let them decide. And when, when you let the team decide, it's, it's their goal, but it's interesting also to contrast because, uh, you know, speaking with other coaches, some of them set the goals themselves. So they would say, you know, let's win the national championship. Let's win this tournament. Let's win the league. And then, and then there was that. So it wasn't, that wasn't common amongst them. However, the, the concept of setting goals was common yeah. and uh, creating ownership of those goals. Uh, you know, some coaches thought that allowing the athletes to facilitate it, facilitate, take that conversation and set the goals themselves Help, help with that shared shared ownership. Yeah, I think the other theme you talked about uh, too as well that kind of build up, built off that was the, the role of autonomy. Like, you know, was there a varying degree of acknowledgement that autonomy played a huge role in the team success or the team, uh, you know, uh, carrying out of that vision between the coaches? Like did some, you know, were some more heavy handed than others and others kind of let things kind of develop organic organically? Yeah. And when I think of autonomy, I think the best example, I know it's getting a little bit away from the study is, is the New Zealand All Blacks. And they talk about a dual leadership role where they have their leaders act as coaches on the field. And I think that's the ultimate, ultimate example of autonomy. Uh, and especially, you know, hockey is a little bit different sport, but in a sport like rugby, where, where they do need to, to change it, uh, you know, the, the, the leaders and the captains have more of an impact specifically on the field of the games because the, the coaches have less of an opportunity to, to intervene, uh, it plays a, an important role, but they built their leadership philosophy, leadership philosophy around the dual leadership model and, and autonomy, creating that autonomy supportive environment. So basically giving them the tools to succeed and, and, and allow and allowing them to have those conversations, but all, uh, to help them grow, but then also giving them space to grow and make mistakes. And, and I think that's what, when you talk about an autonomy supportive environment is all about is, is creating an environment where athletes feel safe to make mistakes uh, and learn from them. And, and the goal is that learning environment. And you talk about culture, it's a, it's a, it's a really, uh, you know, it's a word that's used quite often. And when you think about it and you break down the elements of that, one of those things is you want to have that autonomy supportive environment. And it's specifically allowing athletes to make mistakes, to feel safe, to learn from them, but to have that uh, built into your process, where we're, we're here to make mistakes, because you're to get better, you're going to make mistakes. Right. Now, um, in your continuum or your you know your phased approach that you had there, you know, uh, I found it really interesting at the bottom of of the diagram that you created that um, coach adapting kind of had a you know a, a, a role in all three phases. From your from your research and, and from talking with these you know coaches specifically, what role did their desire to continue to learn and develop and change and, and improve? 
what what role did that play in you know how they implemented and developed their vision well well one of the things stands out is talking to some of these guys who have been coaching for 30 years and they're still learning they want to learn and this is one of the characteristics that's common with with uh, in the research as well of these these like what they call serial winning coaches uh, as coaches who who you know won multiple championships to, at all different levels is that they're always learning they're always learning from different conversations they're learning from conversations they'll talk to you and they'll be learning from you uh, so I sat down with one coach and then at the end of the conversation at the end of the conversation he says okay give me some McGill drills and uh, and that's you know that's the type because that's the characteristic of these type these type of coaches is always getting better and I think that's a great message to uh, coaches who are who are tuning in and that are you know if you're listening to this 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 podcast you're, you're you're looking to get better and that that doesn't change at any point in your life so these guys who are successful in the coaching for 30 years there's a reason why they're still around after 30 years because they're continuing to adapt if you're learning you're adapting and uh, if you're self-aware you can you can you you're, you're staying true to your to your core values and the, the core of the vision stays the same, but some elements change with time and change with the external environment. And that's, that's one of the things that stood out. And uh, you know, it's it got to, you know, walk into some of the uh, coaches offices and they have books on the shelf and they're talking about different books that they're reading and, and looking, they're constantly looking for inspiration. Now, what are, what's, you know, this is, um, probably uh, step one in terms of what, what are, what are other opportunities for you in terms of when you're researching this topic, like where, where could you take this further and, and dig in? Like, what were some of the areas where you thought, well, that's really interesting that could come out of this research, you know, where, where else could you take it? You know, stri strictly from a, a personal lifelong learning standpoint, I, I find it really interesting to talk to professional coaches and, and see how it, see how this, uh, you know, might be different in the professional domain. Uh, because specifically college coaches, I think those two, those two things of, of developing the, the person and, uh, and the athlete, uh, those two things align with the overall message of, of the learning environment in a university. However, in professional sport, you, you do have the, the context of we got to make money and we got to win now uh, yeah. and pressure from, from external factors such as GM. So uh, one of the major differences in professional sport is from, from college sport is in college, the, the coach get essentially gets essentially to be the CEO of the whole organization. He gets to set the vision. He gets to implement it. He gets to choose the athletes that come in. Whereas in professional sport, uh, as a head coach, you likely have a GM who's setting the overall vision of the organization and uh, other people who are bringing the players in. So to implement your personal uh, coaching vision, it's it's there are some other dynamics at play. Uh, so that's something that I'd like to. Uh, you know, it may not be a specific, uh, you know, may not come out in the paper, but it, it, in my personal uh, search for, for knowledge, uh, as I, as I come across these, these types of coaches, uh, I'd love, I love asking them these questions. And, you know, it's funny, another thing that's got to be mentioned is all these, all these coaches talk about part of it, you know, you can have all this stuff, you can have this vision, you can have the elements of success, uh, you can have the great environment, the learning, the culture, but at the end of the day, you got to have great players. So and, I think the line in there was, uh, you know, we got to have the better team getting off the bus. I think that was, yeah. uh, it was pretty funny. One of the coaches had said that. Yeah. And, and, uh, were, were you at the, uh, NHLCA coaching conference in, uh, Vancouver, uh, oh, last no, year? I would, the last one I was at in Chicago. Yeah. Okay. So, but it's funny cause somebody asked, uh, you know, Daryl Sutter, who's a guy who's, who's won two Stanley cups say, okay, what does it take to success to, to succeed? And he says, get a good goalie. And, yeah. uh, you, you know, so there is, you know, that element of the, it's not the, it's not the only answer, yeah. but, uh, you, that's, that's, it's definitely part of it. So, you know, if you want to win, you can have all this, all this stuff, uh, in place, yeah. uh, but you, you also need to, to have, have the horses. I guess the last one I have for you too, is that, you know, you go through and you're right. I mean, in the university or college setting, um, it's a different environment than the pro setting. How deliberate do you think? The coaches were like how intentional were they with uh this process uh, from your from your vantage point did, did did many leave anything to chance or was this something that that was strict was very uh, meticulous and kind of put together in a very deliberate way you know the guys who were 
the, the best who were really at the top of their game, like guys who have won, won the most championships, when you sit down with them, it doesn't take very long for you to understand what they're all about. What, what, and if you're a player and you know your expectations and your roles, you, it helps you succeed. So I think the guys who are, who are the best have an ability to clearly communicate their messages and their message is, is really clear. So I'll give you one example. When I asked uh, one coach's vision, he says it, it's simple. He said it's about being the best, and that's an acronym, B-E-S-T. We're not going to talk about talk much about winning, but we will talk about being the best every day. So the acronym is better every single time. And we and uh, so that's you know that that's clear to me. So it's like what what are we here to do? We're trying to get better every day. Uh, and and you know when you talk to a coach like that and you're a part of that team. It's, it's clear what you need to do and it, you'll, you'll uh, be drawn to that team as well if you're that type of person. Well, that's awesome, David. I really appreciate you taking uh, the time today. Um, like I said, you, uh, you got me out of my comfort zone in reading academic art article and uh, really trying to digest it and think about it. But I think you did a great job uh, in encapsulating what uh, you know, these high level coaches, successful coaches, think about when they're putting together a culture or a vision for, for their team. So I appreciate you taking the time today. This chat was great and very useful. Hopefully it will be very useful for our coaches and beyond and, and, uh, and good luck to you as uh, you can keep going on your coaching journey. Thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. Thank you.